All right. I'm just adjusting my screens here just so I can begin the recording. Okay. Uh, let me just start up Windows here. So the good news is that often when I record lessons like this, it's a little easier uh, for you to follow along than it is, say, in class. Uh, one, because there's almost zero interruptions. So uh, the, the class actually goes a little quicker. But two, uh, you can always pause and stop the video and kind of go back or turn on um, closed caption to hear what I'm saying or see what I'm saying, that kind of thing. So it does make it a little simpler for you as well. Uh, I don't know how much easier. However, the, do, the thing you do lose, uh, obviously, is the ability to ask questions. Um, so that kind of sucks, but we do have Slack. So obviously, if you if you need any support whatsoever, you can always you know, contact me on Slack, and then at least you you get some support that way. Um, I'm just modifying my screens here so that I can actually go ahead and do this. Okay, so I've got Windows up. I'm just going to pull up the the lesson here real fast. Usually I do this before I hit record. I don't know why I waited so long. I also need to kind of find out where we're at. So I'm going to open up WAMP to start off with. We're just going to get right into code because we're still a bit... Um, we're still basically on number seven anyway, or sorry, number four, lesson four. So we kind of got to clean that up a little bit. Uh, and this is Monday's class. So, all right, we're at the W, green, perfect. Okay, so let's open up our folder into our ID. So I'm gonna go to the www directory after clicking on the W. I'm going to go to the Comp 1006 folder, and we're on Monday's class. So I'm going to open up my IDE, open up this folder, wait for the IDE to boot up, and I'm going to drag Monday over and drop it, and then it should open up Monday's lesson for me. As soon as it's done here. Okay. Cool. So it looks like we may have finally gotten to the point where we have at least the flash messaging system in place. So that's a good sign. Uh, we have our create script by the looks of it, but we are missing a huge chunk of the create script. So it looks like we haven't actually created users. We did get to the point where we were adding flash messages and letting them know that we uh, have validated and they were missing whatever specific things they needed to do. We didn't do the sanitization of the email, so I'm guessing we haven't set the check for seeing if they exist. No, we haven't. So we haven't done any database connection logic yet. Uh, we have our new form. So let's go ahead and bring up our site itself and we'll see we'll see if it's all there. Hold on. So that's uh, localhost comp ten oh six. Uh, lesson four Monday. Well, it's lesson four Monday for me. I find it much easier just to go to the Comp 1006 file folder and then your lessons appear here and then you just click on your lesson, right? So, um, okay, so we hit the point where we're doing registration. So I'll fill out the registration form, hit submit, should bounce back. Yep, password cannot be empty, password confirmation cannot be empty. So we basically got to the point where we had the validation, sanitization, and normalization steps almost complete. The only steps we're missing right now, by the looks of it, under our create.php, which is under our users folder here. I'm going to close off these other folders here. Um, the redirect back to the form, we must exit or the script will continue. So we did that right in this location here. So our next step is to sanitize the email, which looks like the next spot. So sanitize the email, right? So the filter settings that we were looking at prior uh, last week, which actually help us with validation. Now we used one of them um, up here when we were sanitizing strings. Oh no, actually we haven't used any of them yet. Okay. Not a big deal, uh, then I'll talk about it right now. So basically what I wanna do is I wanna take the email address and I wanna strip out any characters that shouldn't be inside the email address. So you can think of those like 
um, script tags that somebody might try to inject in there, like JavaScript script tags or any illegal characters that aren't allowed inside an email, like the caret sign or the asterisk or something like that. I want to strip all those out. Plus, I also want to strip any um, prefixed um, spaces or postfix spaces. So basically, spaces at the end or spaces at the beginning, because again, that doesn't make it a valid email. And the easiest way to do that is just to use the filter var function that PHP has built into the language. So I'm going to sanitize and then actually store the value right back in my post email. So I'm going to go filter var. That's the, the function. The first argument it takes is the, the thing you want to filter. So I want to filter my post email. Now you'll remember that this comes back from our form, right? So PHP converts our form into a post uh, associative array and each one of the keys are the names of the fields in our form. So that's what we're doing here. So we're going to grab that one, which will contain the value that the user submitted as their email address. And then we're going to use one of the built in um, validation features that they have. So this one's filter sanitized email, which will actually strip any spaces that don't need to be in there, any characters that are illegal, as well as any script tags that they're trying to inject in if they're trying to be malicious. And that's it. So it's going to filter it and it's going to return the result back to post email. And now we can go ahead and use that as the email address to register for the user. Now we do want to sanitize a couple other fields as well. We want to sanitize the first name and last name fields so that if any um, malicious script is inside there, we'll rip all that out. Uh, we'll get rid of anything that's not okay. And in order to do that, we're going to use kind of an interesting structure. It's an inline for each loop. So it goes for each. And then I'm just going to give it the array directly. And we're going to make it as dollar sign field. Okay. And then the array of items are just going to be the field names I want to look at, which are first underscore name and last underscore name. Because they're the only two fields I actually care about. There we go. And then we're going to say uh, dollar sign, oh, dollar sign underscore post, dollar sign field. So the first time that runs, this will be put into here. The second time it runs, this one will be put into here. Uh, equals, and now we're just going to, whoops, not in there, outside of there. Equals the filter var dollar underscore underscore post, dollar sign field. So basically the same thing we did with the email address, almost exactly, except for instead of filter sanitized email, we're going to do filter sanitized string this time. And same thing will happen. Any um, empty spaces at the end of the line or the beginning of the line will be truncated. And any of the um, any of the stuff like uh, uh, script characters that they try to insert in there. So if they try to do like JavaScript inside there, all that'll be ripped out. So we don't have to worry about any of that. It, it doesn't even actually rip them out. I think it escapes them. So that there's not a chance of them being parsed or used as actual script characters. Uh, in other words, voiding cross-site scripting, which is good. All right, so next is our step eight, which is our last validation step. And our last validation step is actually gonna require us to connect to the database and ensure that the user doesn't already exist. And this isn't too bad because we've already connected to the database before, so we know how, and our connection script is up here uh, where we have the include connect. We do need to assign it off because right now it's not actually assigned. And I'm not sure if you remember, but we changed our connect script a bit to work like a function. So let's just take a look and see how our connect script looks currently. So I'm going to go to underscore connect.php. And yet we created this as a function called connect. So what I'm going to do under the create.php is I'm going to create a variable called con and make it equal to the connect function. And there we go. So now the function that we created in here, we're now calling it and its returned value is going to get stored into con for us to use. Cool. So I'm going to scroll back down here and go to step eight on line 71 here. So users need to be unique. So check if the email already exists. Well, that's super easy to do. Let's write a SQL statement first. We're going to select 
just the email column from the users table where the email is equal to the email field they're going to provide us, which they did provide us under post email. Uh, we're going to use a bound parameter, which is like a placeholder for us to insert the actual value into, but as a nice literal value. Uh, so the next thing we're going to create a variable called statement, and we're going to make it equal to a preparation of the SQL string we're going to give it. So it's going to take this string and turn it into a proper MySQL statement. Next, we're ready to bind the parameter. Bind param. And we'll give it the email placeholder. And we'll give it underscore post email, which is our value. And then we'll tell it which data type we expect it to be. And it will not only verify that it is, but it will also cast it to it. So it's a guarantee that whatever gets put in here gets treated as a literal string. And then we're going to execute it. So that will execute the statement. And then now we're ready to actually fetch back whatever SQL returned. So we're gonna do a fetch. And then we'll close our cursor at this point. And what close cursor does is basically prepare everything for the next SQL call. This is not necessary unless you're using the same statement, but uh, it's in there anyway. So now I'm gonna check if the user exists and basically create a new error if it doesn't. So I'm gonna say if exists, right? So if there is no, if this doesn't return any result, this will actually return false. And then that means this would be false. So if I go if false, then that's good because that means the user doesn't exist and I don't want the user to exist because I only want to create a user that doesn't already exist in the system. So I'm going to take dollar sign errors. I'm going to add the square brackets and an equal sign, which says take whatever I put here and push it into this array, even if it has values already in it. And I'm going to say this user already exists. Right. Nice and light, not too much information. All right, so step 10, return errors and count the array. Okay, so we'll return whatever errors we have. It's another good place to check because basically if there are any errors in the system currently at this point, we can't create a user anyway, so we might as well kick them back. And at this point, this is the last bit of error checking that we're doing, so this is a good Bought to actually send them back if there's any errors. So I'm going to say if, count those errors again, is greater than zero, then I'll create the session flash danger and add, oops, sorry, add the argument of errors, which is an array. And then that will get iterated through our flash uh, partial, which will actually iterate all the errors out for us. And then I'm gonna ask, also add the form data, which is really just reassigning the post off to the session form data so that we can use the form data in our form. And then I'm ready to relocate. So I'm gonna relocate to location dot base underscore path which is the root path of our whole um, our whole application, users new.php. There we go, nice and simple, and then I'll exit after that. Cool, so as long as everything is okay, we'll be past this point and actually ready to create the user. So we can go ahead and start that process as well. We can actually start uh, creating the things like the SQL statement, for example. So why don't we create the SQL statement? So SQL statement equals insert, because we're inserting a new user into users. And then the first thing is the list of columns that you're going to be inserting into. So first name, last name, email. And then we're also going to insert the avatar and the password, but not the password confirmation because it doesn't make sense to insert the password confirmation. We're going to insert these values. 
and we'll publish the values just in the middle here, just because it's a bit easier to read. So first underscore name, last underscore name, email address, avatar, and the password. Cool. <clears throat> so the avatar itself, we already have. We're just using this API, which will actually return back an avatar based on our unique email address using string interpolation there. The next step we need to do is actually hash our password. And the purpose of that hashing our password is to make a one-way encryption for our password. This will stop um, anybody from just sitting there trying to decrypt our password. Uh, the idea of a hash password is that there, it's next to impossible to decrypt them because there's just so many plausibilities or possibilities of that hash password that it's, it's not worth somebody's time. It's much easier for them to try to guess what your password is as opposed to uh, trying to decrypt what your password might be. Now, it looks like I wrote a colon here. This should actually be a semicolon. Now, I imagine somebody probably caught that. You guys are pretty smart. All right, so hash password. Turns out hashing a password is very easy. It doesn't require much work on our behalf. It's just using the function hash, password hash. And then we first give it the plain text password we want to hash. I'm going to give it password. And then we tell it how we want the password to be done. So we'll just use password default. And that'll create a hash of our password and then store the hash in the database. And then later on, we can use another function to verify a password against it, which makes it super easy. So now we have these one, two, three, four, five bound parameters inside our SQL statement. We definitely need to go ahead and bind the parameters, prepare the statement and execute. So we'll do all that step. So the first thing I'll do is prepare the statement. There we go. And then the second thing I'll do is actually start to bind these parameters. So bind the parameter. The first one will be first name. It takes dollar sign post, first name. And all of these are going to be the same data type. They'll all be PDO param string, not that. String. And then I'm just going to press Alt, Shift, and Down five times because these are basically the same. These two will be last name. And I did that by just clicking on one like so and hitting control D to select the second one and then change it. This one's a little different. This one is not going to have that portion or that portion or the map portion, or that portion, or that portion. This one's going to look like this. So this will be avatar, and there'll be a dollar sign in front of that one. And then this one will be password. Oops, let me change that one. Password with the dollar sign in front of it. So this avatar is the avatar we defined here, and this password is the password we defined here. And again, those are just strings still, that we want to verify that they're strings. Uh, and then when we're done, we're ready to close our connection. And then the last piece we need to do, because assuming all this worked okay, is we are just going to send back a success message and let the user know everything was okay. So dollar sign underscore session slash success. And instead of empty brackets, because everything has to be an array, user was registered registered successfully. There we go. And then we'll relocate. And we'll just send them back to the login.php page so that they can actually log in. And then we can't forget to access. Okay, so as long as everything works correctly, I should be able to create a new user. Now, I have created several users with my username already. So if I do this under Sean McKinnon, Georgian College, and I hit submit, it's gonna tell me the user already exists. So that's a good test. So 
So I'll enter a new one. I'll enter this email address, whatever email address that is. I've never seen that before. And then I'll submit. Oh, that user exists too. Um, why don't we do blah, 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 blah. Nope, we need proper email. Uh, none of that. There we go. ASDF, ASDF, and submit. Your password and confirmation must match. Uh-oh. Maybe I didn't type ASDF correctly each time. That's possible. ASDF. ASDF. Submit. I made it to login.php, but it was not found. That's because it's not login.php that we should be going to. I made a goof. It's actually sessions. Login.php, that's where it should be going. Now, as it stands right now, we don't actually have, there's my user register successfully. If I go to login, none of this will actually work anyways. If I try to log in as Sean McKinnon at georgiancollege.cn, I hit that, I get undefined variable user under my authenticate.php. And that's because I can't authenticate so let's take a look at this form real fast so that you can see it. Now I did create it for you. Um, you can find this under the sessions login.php and I put it under sessions because that's technically what we're creating. We're creating a authenticated session for the user. So you can think of it like a resource, right? And as you can see, I have our config file, right? I have a title and an active, and we'll go over these a little bit more in depth at a later point. I have the header, so the uh, flash messaging system, all that stuff is in there. I have a login header here. I have a section with our form in it, and my action is sent to go to authenticate.php. And that's the script that will handle verifying whether or not we are a valid user and that it's okay for us to be in there. Uh, and then obviously I'm using the method post. So all of this should seem familiar, right? This basically looks exactly like the first couple of fields that are inside of our create form anyways. Uh, in here, you can see that I'll repopulate the data for the user if they get bounced back. Um, we've got the password over here as well. You know, we don't really actually need to populate the form with this anyways. We can, we can't, it's up to you. Uh, and then I have a small link that basically just points to registering in case they hit the login form, but they haven't registered yet. Uh, so very simple, very basic form, nice little submit button, right? Nothing too complex, should be familiar based on uh, what you've seen in, um, in your HTML class. So when I enter a password though, so yeah, if I hit submit, this is gonna go to sessions authenticate.php. So that's the page that we want to actually work on. So if we go open our sidebar here, go to sessions and open up authenticate.php, and I'll close my sidebar. A lot of this is going to seem familiar because a lot of this is going to seem like the same type of stuff that we did in the create script. So for example, create a messaging system, which seems a lot more complex than it really is. It's really just checking to see if the session status states whether or not the session is currently active. So PHP session none. So if there isn't a session, then go ahead and activate the session for me. And then create a new session variable called flash and make it equal to an empty array. There we go. So next we want to sanitize the user supplied email address, just like we did inside the create script. So we're just gonna say, um, actually I have two things here, validate the user supplied email and sanitize the user supplied email. Um, I mean, we don't need to validate it. We'll assume they entered it in correctly, uh, but we will sanitize it just to strip any malicious possible stuff out of it. So we'll do filter far, dollar under sign score post, email address, Right, and we'll just filter sanitize this one, email. There we go, and that'll remove any 
malicious stuff or any extra spaces that aren't necessary and all that type of stuff. So you're going to notice that we're not passing the password to our SQL query because we're not going to look up for a user based on the email and password. Though that, that was a way that we used to do it way back in the past, so that's not really safe. Um, it's actually better to get the user and then verify whether the raw password they gave us matches the user that we selected. That, that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, so the way we're going to do that, let's get rid of all this stuff here. We're just going to first write a SQL statement to go grab the user. And this is no real different than how we grabbed the user the last time. So for this time, instead of selecting just the email column, we're going to select all of the columns. So we're going to say select star from users where the email is equal to the placeholder email or the bound parameter email. Then we're going to create a statement variable, just like we keep doing with a connection. And we're going to prepare this SQL statement for our MySQL. Next, we'll bind the value to the parameter that we have. So STMD, skinny arrow, bind param. Uh, the placeholder is called colon email. Our value is called email. At least I think it's called email. Yep, we called it email. And we're going to bind it to PDO colon colon param string. So only one bound parameter that we have to worry about. Now we can go ahead and execute the statement, which will fire it off to MySQL. And then once that is complete, we're going, we can go ahead and actually fetch the user, which will store the user in a variable called user, which makes sense. So this variable, if there is the user, will now have all the information we need in order to go ahead and actually um, attempt to verify their password against them. So the first check we're going to do, we're going to do two checks here. We're going to do if we get no user back, meaning the user is not available, there's no user, this returns false. Or, and this is where we're gonna do our password check, and we're gonna make it opposite because the, the uh, function we're gonna use is called password verify, and it returns true if the password's matched, but we want the opposite to that because in this block below, we're gonna actually record an error and send the user back with an error if it doesn't verify. So we're gonna say password verify, dollar sign underscore post password. So we're going to verify their password. And it takes two arguments. It takes the raw password, and then it takes the hashed password, which we can get back from the user. So dollar sign user, whoops, pass, password, if I can type. So if I don't get a user back, so if this returns back false because the email obviously was incorrect, then we'll send back to the user and say, you know, there was a problem. Otherwise, if that passes, that means I got a user back. But now if the password doesn't validate, so the password they provided doesn't match the user's password that I brought back based on the hashing algorithm, then I'm going to spit back and say, nope, you made a mistake and this did not work. So first I'm going to do underscore session slash danger, and I'm going to stick this in an empty array, so I'll just push on to the empty array, equals the email or password combination is incorrect. So this is known as security by obscurity. Because people are usually, when they're trying to uh, brute force into a into an application, they're going to just keep trying combinations of emails or usernames and passwords against the login as many times as they're allowed to do it. And so they'll have massive dictionaries where they're just going to try each one. We want to give them as little information as possible. So this basically just says, I, I don't know if the email is correct or the password is correct, but one of them wasn't correct. And that's the information I'm going to give you. And so it doesn't tell them which one actually worked. So they don't know if that email is in our account, at least not right off the bat. They could go attempt to register that user and try to register, you know, 5,000 different users in their thing, but it takes a lot longer to go through that process as opposed to going through our login form. So, you know, it's kind of, at least it's a little bit of a way to kind of slow them down. Next, I'm going to copy over the form data. 
this is really just a perk for no real reason because it's only literally one field. But we'll do it anyways. Be good people. We're going to relocate. Really need to pick a friggin' quote character and stick with it. I keep switching back and forth, and I don't know why. It's mostly laziness, I think. So we're going to navigate them back to sessionslogin.php, and then we'll exit. So if their password doesn't match the one in the system, or the username they attempt to log in with doesn't match, they're going to get back this error message. So we should probably go test that and make sure that's the case. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to refresh. I'm going to try this guy. Hit submit. Undefined variable con on line 23. Uh-oh, we're trying to use the connection statement here, but we have not created it. So let's do that first. At the very top of our page, we're going to do dollar sign con equals connect. There we go. Now we have our connection. Now let's go back and refresh. Continue. Email or password combination is incorrect. So let me try it with my email address, but definitely not the correct password email or password combination is incorrect now notice i didn't get my email address back which is kind of interesting Let's... yeah you see i'm not getting the email address back each time which is a bit odd um because i'm definitely telling it to come back with the form data uh so i should have definitely got it back let me go ahead and open up the form just to make sure oops it's control p to open that up and we want to go to login.php. So I have, I'm looking for the dollar sign form data email if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then that would be my problem. Under authenticate PHP, I'm definitely signing off the session form data. And then uh, the only other thing I can think of that might be the problem is we never completed the actual second part of our header. Yeah, we didn't. Okay, cool. So I want to actually see the details in here if I make a mistake. It was more for this, actually. If I make a mistake and hit submit, I should see ASDF back in here and not just a bunch of empty values in here, right? I want to see at least some of the stuff that I finished. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to need to open up our header.php. And what we're going to do is we're going to sign off our form data to the session variable form data or null. And that's gonna go up here in our header. And then when we're done, we're gonna unset our session form data. So the form data will live for one request cycle and that's it. So basically they make a mistake, it goes to create or update or whatever thing we're going to. They made a mistake, we send them back to the form they were at and then we repopulate the form. But if they hit refresh on that page, the form clears because the data will only live for the lifespan of this variable, which is literally just for the request that we're currently in. And because we've unset the session variable, we've blown away all of the data currently in there. Okay. So now I don't know if we actually edited the form itself. Um, let's go to uh, users form. PHP. No, we did not. We did not edit this. So we're going to add another attribute inside this form called value. So this is going to go under input. And what value does is it pre-populates the form with a value. So we're going to do, we're also going to help ourselves a little bit. I'm just going to press enter here. And up here in line, I'm going to add a new variable called form data equals form data or null, which basically if for some reason this form gets included in a page where form data doesn't exist, this will help kind of protect us from accidentally trying to use a variable that doesn't exist. So under value, I'm going to use an inline echo. I'm going to echo out form data, and I'm going to attempt to echo out form data first underscore name, because these values will always use the same values as the name class inside the input because that's the same thing we're sending to our post right or with the double question marks or just null right so either it's going to spit out form data or it's going to spit out null 
So why don't we just go ahead and copy that whole thing right there from quote to the beginning of value. I'm going to hit control C. Come down here to last name, control V, and just change this out with last name. And then I'm going to do the same thing to email. Control V, replace email, and then hit save. Now the thing is, is that password that you see in here, there's no point in repopulating the password. It kind of freaks people out anyways. We don't want to freak them out. We just literally want to populate what values we were missing. So ASDF is in here because it hasn't cleared, but the second time I refresh, it's now gone. So if I type in Sean at Georgian College and I hit submit, I'll get password cannot be empty, password confirmation cannot be empty, and notice my values are still there. And if I do my password, user already exists, but my details are still here. However, the password has cleared out. So there we go. So we have our pre-filled form. I'm going to go back to login. <clears throat> I'm going to try a password that doesn't match. Hit submit. Email or password combination is incorrect, but my email address is still in the login form. Cool. Let's close off that guy. Close off this guy, and we'll go right back to authenticate. So we know that this is all working now. So the next step is if this works, right? So if we verify the password and we don't wind up in this block, then we know the user is ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unset the user's password. I'm going to assign our user off to a variable called session. And essentially what that's going to do is basically tell us that the user has logged in. This will mean the user has logged in because we'll have a session variable called user that will exist on the back end that we can check. And if this exists, then we know our user is logged in. So we can actually restrict access to certain things. And then we can redirect the user to the profile page. Okay, well, that, that makes sense. We can definitely redirect them to the profile page. I mean, that's the one page they get to edit every single user does. So uh, yeah, I mean, why, why the hell not? So um. To do that, we're going to go, uh, first we're going to write a succession message, right? Session flash success, couple of square brackets equals, you have successfully logged in. Congratulations. Then, we're going to redirect them to location, space path, right? Which is the root path of our application. And we're going to send them off to the profile. So that's users show, right? Uh, dot PHP question mark ID equals, because we're going to provide the get parameter. And it's literally just going to be user ID, right? Because it's whatever user we're currently working with. And then we'll exit. And that is it. They're, they will be technically logged in. Now, if I jump back, type ASDF and hit submit, you have successfully logged in. And here I am in my user profile because it redirected me to the correct user. Now, if I click log out, nothing happens, right? Because this is a blank page. I don't get redirected or anything. And we might as well finish log out because log out is super simple. And then that's us caught up with every other class at that point. So we're going to go to logout.php and we're going to do start a scene the session if it doesn't exist. Well, obviously, we're going to say if session status is equal to PHP session none, right? So otherwise, if there isn't a session, then we're going to start a session. Then we're going to unset the user key and all of its value, right? So we created a session and then, sorry, we created the user key under session, which basically meant that we had a logged in user. Now we're gonna just log them out by pretending the user, by unsetting the user. So that means they'll be basically logged out. Then we'll create a session flash message so equals a set of square brackets. Oops, need to make sure I do the correct variable because cap capitals 
does mean something different than lowercase letters. Then underscore session slash success set a little healthy square brackets equals you logged out successfully. There we go. So the user is now logged out. We can redirect them back, header, location. And this time, you know what? We'll just send them directly to the home page because that makes sense. So back to home you go. And we're ready to exit. There we go. So start the session if it isn't already started. Unset the session user, right? This is just a session variable where we stored the user data. We'll just unset it. It's kind of our way of being able to tell if the user is logged in or not. Uh, session flash message is equal, right? So we just create an empty flash and then we set it with some stuff. And then we relocate them back to the index page. We save the page. Now we jump back over. Refresh, we've logged out successfully. Now the thing is though, is we don't actually know if we've logged in or logged out because we have nothing really symbolizing that we're logged in or logged out. We could make it so that we can at least see the correct order of these things. Like, I mean, login should only show if we have a user that is log that hasn't logged in. Register should show if the user hasn't logged in. And logout should only show if you have logged in, right? And then these two should be invisible. So it's kind of like a toggling back and forth. So this gets us into um, actually the final week five lesson of edit, update, and destroy, but also working with utility helpers. And the one that we're actually going to talk about right now is authentication checks. So we can actually create some authentication checks to basically turn these on or off based on whether or not the user is logged in or not. So we're going to actually create those underneath our includes. So we're actually going to add a new includes file. We're going to hit new file under includes, and we're going to call this authentication. All right, let me make sure I spell this correctly. Authentication helpers.php. So that's authentication helpers.php. Kind of a kind of a long phrase, right? And inside this, it's going to be very simple. Basically, what we're going to do. We're just going to check to see if the user is logged in. And the easiest way to check if the user is logged in is to check if the session user key has been set with a value. If it has, then we know they're logged in. So because we're checking session keys, we're definitely going to need to make sure the session is active. So we'll do a quick session check. If it isn't, then we'll start it. Because every time we switch a page, eh, you have to restart the session every time you change requests. So we'll create two functions. The first function is going to be called is off, which means is this person authenticated, right? That's the first function. And it's very easy. We're just going to return is set dollar sign underscore session user. Because if they're authenticated, then yes, this session key will be set. So that's an easy way to know. The next one we're gonna check is, is admin. So this way we can tell whether or not they're an administrative user. Now, the way we check that is by not only checking that the session is set, but also that they have a role of administrator. So we can say return is off. So we're literally just calling this function and dollar sign underscore session user role is equal to admin. So we're checking to see if their session is set and then we're checking to see if their role is administrator. Now, because these functions, you know, we have to type out these functions everywhere we go. We can simplify this a bit by creating a couple of variables, a couple of constants that then we just have to check the constants. And the constants will already have these values in them because they'll have already called these functions for us. So the way we do that, we're gonna open up our config file right here, underscore config.php. And the first thing we're gonna do, we're going to create some authentication constants. So first we'll include once, because we only need it once, 
dot slash includes, because we know where we're located here, dot slash includes underscore connect dot p nope sorry <laughs> authentication helpers dot php there we go next we'll create a couple of constants so we'll define and the first one we're going to call auth sorry i was on the wrong file here auth and we're literally just going to call is off the function that we defined inside this file. And then we're going to define admin. And we're just going to call the method admin that we defined. So there we go. We have our function calls that we created under authentication helper. And in our config file, we're just going to define those as constants. And then we can easily check to see whether or not the user has authenticated or not. So now, now that we've done that, we're going to edit our navigation using those in order to tell. And the best thing about it, because this config script is literally included everywhere we go, like if we go to the partial where we have our main nav, like there's our include config script, right? So we don't have to worry. These two functions are now available. These two constants, sorry, are now available in this main nav, no problem, right? So now we can actually start stating what of these things we wanna see that should be available to somebody if they're logged in or not logged in. So the first thing we'll deal with is just the login new and log out issues, right? So if we're not logged in, then we want to see those. So the way we do that, we'll write a PHP statement here. And we're basically just going to go, if not off, right? So if not off, then go ahead and show these. So end if, right? So go ahead and show these, right? And actually we'll switch this to an else because underneath here, we'll just go PHP and if, and that logic completely works. So if you're not authenticated, then show the login and the registered users, meaning you either need to log in or you need to create a user so you can become authenticated. Otherwise, meaning you are authenticated, only show the logout, right? So that's where the end if comes up. Oh, forgot a colon after this bad boy. Uh, I keep hitting that button. There we go. Yeah, nicely in line. Okay, let's go take a look and we should see our nav change the second we hit control R. Nope, looks like we have some issues. So the issue I've got right now is include once includes failed to open no such directory on config on line 10. So that has to do with just based on where things are. And that's because we're doing this includes and we should never do that. We need to do base path or not base path, sorry, root. There, that will make it nicely absolute, my bad. No more control R. So there we go. We can see login and register. So I can get to register. I can get to login. So now I'm going to sign in, hit submit, and now I can see logout. So then I know now that I'm logged out. If I hit refresh, if I go to any other page, I can see that I've logged in. If I click logout, now I get login and register. So let's take this a little step further. I'm going to go back to main nav. And I'm going to make it so that only administrative users can actually see this, um, not the users thing, like not the my profile, they should be able to see that, but any of these drop down functions that are in here. So they shouldn't see this one at all, because they shouldn't be able to create a new user from here without clicking on register or view all users, those they should have no access to. So we're going to try our other one this time. We're going to come up here to just above the nav item drop down here. And we're going to create an if condition this time that says if admin, 
meaning that if you're an administrative user, right? So if you're the administrator, tab this guy in. PHP end if, save that. So if you're the administrative user, then you can see the drop down and you can create a new user or view all users. Otherwise you're not allowed. I forgot my colon up here. I need to make sure the colon goes up there. There. So if you're an administrator, you can see them and you can create them. Otherwise you can't. So now if I refresh, because I don't think this user is one, yep, you see I can only see my profile and the user's thing has disappeared. So why don't we convert ourselves over to an administrator? Now the easiest way to do that is by clicking on this button and going to the PHP My Admin. So click on PHP My Admin, which for some reason wants to open up an IE, which is super weird. Click go. I'm just gonna reduce my screen size a bit because it's absurdly large. Click on Comp 1006. Click on Users. Find yourself in the list, right? So here's me right here. Scroll yourself over and underneath here, it says general, double click it and click in the drop down and change yourself to a min and then just click off anywhere and it will say one row affected. Now, when you go back, if you hit refresh, obviously nothing changes right now. If you go to login, log yourself in and hit submit, now you should be able to see the user's account, right? So let's try one other thing. Notice that we can see my profile, right? We shouldn't be able to see that if we're not logged in because that should only be for authenticated users. So up here is my profile. So we'll wrap that one too. We'll say PHP if off colon. I forgot the colon this time. We'll tab these guys over. Oops. PHP, lowercase, and if. There we go. So now it only works if you are not logged in. So if we go back and hit refresh, control R, see the profile button has disappeared, right? Now the only thing to note though, these files still exist because if I go to users and hit enter, I can still see the users. Ha ha, I've hacked the system just by typing in users. We need to actually stop the user from being able to do that and accessing pages they're not allowed to access. So what we're gonna do to do that is we're gonna create a helper file that will actually allow us to, at the top of the page, basically prohibit users from accessing pages we don't want them to access. So, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna close out all these pages here. And uh, I don't have this written down, so we're going to freeform this. <clears throat> I'm going to go to, well, first let's start with the users, right? Because they're the things I don't want them to be able to do. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to uh, new, for example, right? And I don't want them to be able to even access this page unless they exist. So I have this underscore config.php that's included in here, right? And it's literally included at the top of every single file we're working in, including, including index, right? So I think what we'll do is in the includes, no, sorry, in the root here, in the underscore config.php, we'll add a new function in here and then we'll move it later on. So this will be a helper function Actually, why don't we add this into our authentication helpers? That makes sense. Sorry, I'm kind of winging this a little bit. Okay, so helper function to redirect unauthenticated user. Okay, so we're gonna say, um, we're gonna say if, let's write function, uh, Let's do is auth redirect. And this will be, we'll take an argument called path. And so basically what will happen is if, actually let's do this. Let's go not auth redirect, that makes more sense. All right, so let's check to see if they're authenticated. So if they're not authenticated, 
then we're going to set a header uh, and the header will point to location. We'll even do half the legwork for them, right? Dot base path dot dollar sign path. Pretty easy, right? So we just have to tell it which path that we want it to go to, and we'll even tell it to exit the script when it's done, right? Or we can actually duplicate this. There we go. This one we'll call not admin. So if they're not admin, so we're actually going to do a double check here. So not authenticated and not is admin. So not only are you not authenticated, you're also not an administrator. And we're going to go ahead and redirect. Actually, I can't do base path here, can I? Because I don't actually have the config file in here. So I can't do base path. So we'll just change this out to, um, we'll just do path, that's fine. We'll just make this path, that's okay. We'll just put the base path in our side. Actually make it a little bit more portable that way as well. So basically if they're not authenticated, we'll redirect them. If they're not the administrator, we'll redirect them, okay? So that's good, so we're fine there. So what we'll do now is we'll go to, um, we'll, we'll have to do this in a few different places. We'll go to new first and right under the config, we'll put not admin redirect. There we go. So if they're not an admin, they're going to get redirected. And then we can copy this because this needs to go in a few different places. So we're gonna put it under new we're going to put it under index for sure. There we go. Actually, we don't want it under new. Sorry, we don't want it under new because we want people to be able to register. They get there in a sneaky way. They get there in a sneaky way. So we want it under index though. So really just under index. That's the thing we only really care about. So it's under index for now. We're going to have to do something a little different if they're logged in. Then we're going to have to do something a little different under new and create and all of that. Um, because we don't want them accessing those if they're already logged in and they're not an administrator. So let's jump back in. And if I hit refresh, dun, 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 dun. no, we got, oh, because we didn't give it a path. We need to give it a path. <clears throat> so we'll give it the path of base path dot index.php. So we'll just redirect right back. Actually, we don't even need index.php. Actually, we don't even need that. We just need base path. That'll take us right back to the root. So here we go. See, right back we go. Can't access it. I'm a crazy, sneaky little hacker. Users, nope, can't access it. So I'll log in as this guy here. Submit. Yay, now I can see it. View all users, everything's fine because I'm an administrator, so I'm allowed. Why don't we register a new user? And I'll call this guy ASDF at ASDF.com. His password is ASDF and ASDF. There we go. We have a new registered user, and we're going to go to ASDF at ASDF.com and ASDF and hit submit. Oh, his password is ASDF. All right, if all else fails, we'll jump over to almost PHP my MN. Go. Dun, 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 dun. Um, I'll refresh here. I don't see the ASDF guy. Maybe I'm not looking at all the rows. Let's look at 50 rows. Yep, I don't see the ASDF guy, even though it did say that it created it. Let's uh, let's try it again then. Register ASDF, ASDF, ASDF at ASDF.com, ASDF, ASDF. Submit. User was registered successfully. Let's refresh and verify that that's true. Hey, see, I'm not getting the user over here. 
They supposedly were registered successfully. Huh. Uh oh. Okay, so obviously for some reason I've goofed something up. So let's go to create.php. So we are making it to this point where we're able to say that we've registered. Oh, I see where we made our mistake. We totally forgot to execute. <laughs> we don't execute, the darn thing doesn't work. We need to execute. All right, let's try that again. Go to register. ASDF, ASDF, ASDF at ASDF.com, ASDF, ASDF. Submit. Registered successfully. ASDF.com, ASDF. Submit. Logged in. There's my profile, but I can't see users. And I shouldn't be able to see users. Back up. Uh oh, 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 I can see users. That's not a good sign. Let's go take a look. Not admin, redirect to base path. Well, why does it assume that I'm the admin? Let's go make sure that there's not an error in here and that really I'm an administrator. No, I'm a general user, not an administrator. Let's go look at our code under authentication helper here. So, return is off and session. Oh. So is not authenticated or is not administrator. Not and is not administrator. The logic there was a bit wrong under the not admin redirect under authentication helper. All right, now let's try it. Boom, sends me back. Not allowed to go there. Users, nope, not a chance. Off you go. <clears throat> so now I can access my profile, right? Even though my profile doesn't appear to be correct for whatever reason, I need to fix that, but obviously everything else is okay. So why don't we fix that next? Because the my profile is wrong. So we'll go over to our nav. So let's open up our nav. Oops, let's stop accidentally typing characters in. Here's our nav. Let's go to where we have our profile. Here's my profile. Yeah, you see, we don't have anything in there right now, so we'll add a little bit of PHP in here. We'll just do an inline equal statement, right? And in here, we'll do dollar sign underscore session, user, ID. And we can kind of get away with that because we know that off that auth check already contains the session status. Like, so we've already started the session and I can't even access this unless the session is running and this user exists. If this user doesn't exist, then there's no way this auth would have been approved, right? So I know I'm okay. This thing needs to be saved too, by the way. Um, so I know I'm okay. So I'm gonna now jump back, hit refresh. And now if I go to my profile, I can see my user ID down there. Click on profile and sure enough, there I am. So I'm logged in. So I've got a general user and a, um, a whatchamacallit user, a, uh, what am I again? An administrator user. So that's cool. Now there are some kind of issues in here though as well, because the administrative user should be the only one allowed to be able to create new users while logged in. If they're logged in as a profile user, they shouldn't be allowed to create new users, right? But as it stands, if I go to ASDF and I go to new.php and just type it in, I can now create a brand new user even though I'm logged in. And I don't want them to be able to do that. They're already a user. You can log out and go create a user like the rest of the general users. Only administrative, administrative users should be able to create new users. Another issue too that we're not thinking about, if I go to profile, I can see this user, but if I change, I can see this user and I shouldn't be allowed to see that user because I'm just the general user. So those are two things we need to fix. We need to fix the fact that I can go to new.php and that I can go to another user. So let's fix the new.php, that's the first piece. 
<clears throat> and both of them are basically the same idea. So if I go to new.php, what I'm gonna do in here is we're gonna check, we're gonna say, we're gonna say if, auth, right? So if you are already a user, right? So if you're already in there, so if you're authenticated and you're not an administrator, then we're gonna do a not admin redirect back to home. So what basically that means is if you're authenticated, but you are not an administrator, then we're going to do a not admin redirect back to the base path. That's essentially what's gonna happen. So if you're not an administrator, we're gonna send you off home. Now we could take this and probably put it right here, and that would mean the same thing. So if I take that, because we already do this check anyways, I can put that right there and it means exactly the same thing. So what will happen is they'll say if auth and then it'll literally execute this function and redirect if that's the case. If not, it will just return back and say whatever, right? Um, actually, no, let's not do that because I don't think PHP works that way. We'll do it this way. It's a bit redundant with these two, but I mean, it's fine. So this logic is actually gonna be the exact same logic that we're gonna wind up with in our show. Uh, but we have one more other piece, which is basically if you're not the user that you're currently in and you're not an administrator. So if you're not authenticated or you're not the user you're currently in, then those are all bad things, right? So let's just check new. So now that we go to new, if I click refresh, no, they get redirected back. However, if I'm an administrator, and I go to create a new user, I can create a new user. So that's good, that's a good user experience for me. So I'm gonna come back in, log in as my asdf.com person. There we go, I can go to my profile. I should not be able to go to new.php. However, we're not done because I can still go to underscore form.php, which is not good. And I could actually go ahead and fill out this form by myself and I shouldn't have access to it either. So we need to make sure we actually cover all use cases. So I'm gonna to go to underscore form.php and I'm just gonna copy this logic. So I'm gonna go um, copy this, control C, go to my form and right above this, I'm just gonna paste it in place. And then now, if they try to go to the users underscore form.php, they're going to get a constant auth assume. They're missing a whole bunch of header stuff, but they still got access to this stuff. So we got to be careful here. So what we'll do is we'll actually also need to include this guy. So let's change this to an include once under the new. And we'll copy this as well. And then we'll just paste it in here. So there we go. So new and form. And this might seem redundant, but it's kind of important just because they can access the form directly. Um, because they can access the form directly, we have to be a little careful. So there we go. That kicks them back. They can't, they can't get what they need to do. So next is the show, right? So users, show. They can access any one of these show people. They shouldn't be allowed, right? They should only be allowed to access um, themselves, that's it. So the way we fix that is we open up show and uh, we have step one, get the user by ID. So this is gonna get the user. Here we are at our config. So now this is where we're gonna basically check. So if, actually we can check before this. We can check at the very top of this page. No, we can't. We can't check till after the config. Uh, which incidentally could be at the top of the page. So why don't we move that to the very top of the page? Does that make sense? So we'll do our config first because right underneath it, we'll do this check. And so PHP. 
if not auth, so if they're not logged in, or dollar sign underscore session user ID does not equal dollar sign underscore get ID. So if those things don't equal each other. So in other words, if the user is not this user, and this is where it gets a little tricky, we're gonna have to take this whole thing and wrap it in parentheses. And they're not an amin, then we'll do the not amin redirect to base path. All right, so that's a bit of a mouthful to figure out. So basically, if you're not authenticated, or if your session user ID doesn't match the get ID, and you're not an admin, because administrators are allowed to do this, even if their session ID doesn't match the get ID, then we're going to go ahead and redirect you back to the base path. So if I come back here and I hit refresh on mod, I get shoved back. But if I log out, log in as Sean McKinnon at georgiancollege.ca, go to users, view all the users, and click on Eleanor, I can view Eleanor's profile even though that's not my profile ID, right? Because my profile ID is 20. Hers is 10. But I can't do that if I'm not a administrative user. So if I log in as the ASDF guy and I change this to 20 to access the administrator, I get shoved back because I'm not allowed to access. So we're almost finished. We basically have all of this. The only last place we need to consider is this redirect that we're doing here under the new.php page. Go ahead and copy that again. And this time go to create.php because we need to do the same thing. Basically, if they're not authorized and an administrator, they're not allowed to go to the create.php page to create a new PHP user. So we're gonna come here. I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to basically say, there we go. If you're authenticated and you're not an administrator, then you're getting redirected because you're not allowed to create it. And the way I do this is because they could technically bypass everything and send a post request directly to the form or create their own form in the browser and just send off a post request to the create script. This stops that from happening and we redirect them because they're still not allowed to create a new user if they already exist as a user. All right, so that was quite a bit to cover and I recommend watching this on slow and going over it a few times. I'm not gonna cover this again uh, going forward. We're gonna start from this point. What I will do though is basically give everybody this code block uh, on Monday of next week, and we're going to start from this point, considering this is lesson five, and then we're going to do uh, edit, update, and delete, along with the lecture, uh, and then we're ready to create our parent-child resource the following week. So we're still about one week behind, which is not too bad. I do apologize for not coming in tonight, but unfortunately, I um, was in a car accident on Saturday. Nothing too bad, just a little bruised and sore. Um, the whole front end of my car got smashed in and they basically, um, it's basically a write off all the airbags deployed. Uh, it was pretty brutal. Um, but I'm okay. My wife's okay. So that's, that's the good thing. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this. Um, I will see you next Monday for sure. I now have a rental, nice little Honda Civics, pretty zippy. Um, so I'll see everybody next week for sure. I hope you guys all have a good night.